it. I'm sitting here with uh, Idan Presser from uh, Composition Magazine in beautiful Lisbon, talking to Marina Gurevich and uh, Zurab Kiknatze. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. Marina, uh, Marina is the uh, product manager for consumer DSLR in, in Nikon, and uh, Zurab is the product manager for lenses and software and accessories. Hello to you both. Um, let's start with um, basically a user experience question. We, you have been using the um, two cameras, the Coolpix uh, A and the Nik Nikon D7100 with us for the past uh, three days. Uh, Marina, what would you say is the, your favorite feature on the D7100? My favorite feature on this camera is the 1.3x crop. Because it's just a new function and it's uh, just one button, but it gives you so many nice opportunities. So uh, you can have the full frame coverage, so the tracking, focus tracking is really perfect. So you can track the subject from uh, one edge to the other, so it's perfect. It also gives you more speed, up to 7 frames per second, so one more. Uh, and you get a telephoto effect, basically, with every lens you can zoom a bit more. So just one button, but a lot of different functions, so I like it. Okay, and Zorb, what, what is your favorite feature on the Coolpix 8? Well, Coolpix 8 actually being not my own product, so to say, I'm at the same time probably one of the biggest fans of this uh, product due, due to the fact that I'm an enthusiast photographer myself. Um, there is not a single feature I can mention, it's just a combination of them all. It's a combination of the X sensor, it's the combination of the prime 28mm fast lens, it's a combination of the very user-friendly uh, GUI user interface and the final image is what really it comes down to and I think when I personally saw the image quality, a combination of the lens and sensor, I can't say that today we could have done any better. Okay. Uh, um, let's move to more uh, technical questions. Um, in the, basically, in any uh, uh, image editing software or uh, even editing viewing software, uh, say Photoshop or uh, even the more basic uh, Microsoft Viewer in, in, uh, in Windows, uh, you have a percentage uh, of the image, uh, of the zoom image. For example, if you are uh, inside the image to 50%, you see 50% or 100% so you know where you are. This is something that you can't find in any camera that I know of. Is this feature something that you can maybe add in the future in firmware or in future cameras? Yeah, that's a le logical request. Well, basically what we do, we always co um, yeah, collect the feedback from all the users and from professional and VMPS, etc. and then try to prioritize them. Um, so, so far I did not hear a lot of this request, but obviously uh, everyone who is looking at the software uh, is used to that. So. Um, consider. Okay, um, let's talk about buffer size of the D7100. Uh, I think that the most significant uh, feature that uh, users have been asking us to uh, add to uh, or to add or asking you know for to improve. improve yeah to improve is uh, is the buffer size uh, especially compared to the D300S. Now um, what's the limiting factor here? Are we talking about price adding more RAM memory to the camera or is it something else? Yeah, I think to answer your question, I need to tell you a bit about the positioning or where the camera is actually uh, placed. So if you if we talk about the 300S, that's a professional camera. That's a DX camera dedicated for professional users. Uh, if we talk about D7100, it's enthusiast camera dedicated to enthusiast users. And even though it has so many powerful uh, functions that basically many people consider it's almost a pro. That's why we get some kind of questions about the buffer size because because it's so advanced already. Then you you want even more basically. Uh, in that sense, it's not a D300S successor, so you mm. cannot directly compare it to that. And um, as I said, there are so many uh, functions already in this camera. Uh, so to be able to make it an enthusiast camera, meaning also enthusiast price and be placed in that segment, um, yeah, we cannot include just every possible feature there is in the professional. So market. basically, if you add more uh, RAM or more buffer, you would basically add 
to the, the cost to the cost of the camera. It will, uh, yeah, we cannot actually disclose the costs, but it will complicate the R and D process in a way. So it will take all, it could also take more development <coughs> time, for example. Okay. Um, question that we got from our, one of our users: um, Will we see any significant or even any difference at all between uh, using a 45 megabyte uh, per second uh, SD card versus the fastest that is currently on the market, which is 95 percent megabyte uh, per second card on the D7100? Yeah, you will see the difference, um, but you need to um, yeah to take into account that that does not affect the buffer size itself, but that's uh, how fast the uh, card reads out the buffer. So if you're taking a lot of shots, so then that will help. Yeah. Okay. And also outside the camera, how fast your computer will be able to download the cards. Uh, uh, yeah, obvi obviously it's not uh, uh, something off the camera itself, yeah. but it's important otherwise. Um, you, I think that you mentioned it before, but um, basically the um, the D in your position, in Nikon position, the D7100 is basically not a replacement for the, D7, uh, for the D300S. It's, it's a different line of cameras, which is below, I'm, I'm not sure how, how Yeah, well, it. the best way to understand is basically that we are extending the D7000 series. Okay. Because D7000 still remains uh, on the market, it continues yeah. to be sold. And then we extend this enthusiast uh, range of the camera with a more advanced camera. And it's, it's targeted to a quite wide um, uh, spectrum of users, mostly enthusiast users. Mm -hmm. So it's more advanced than D7000, but it's not positioned as a professional camera like D300S. And the D300S is still basically currently uh, on the line of cameras for Nikon? Right? Yeah, D300S okay. is also still uh, in the line of... Okay, um, moving to uh, accessory related uh, question. Uh, the current WU1A or 1B, which is the small, uh, tiny, I think, uh, Wi-Fi uh, adapter, adapter, which you can use on basically almost the entire new line of uh, of Nikon cameras, other than the D4, D800. Um, is it basically the functionality is very basic? I'm talking about the application, not the the, the hardware. Uh, you can shoot and either upload it to the web or do something with the image but you can't control any aspect of the camera. Um, are you working on a more advanced uh, um, feature or more advanced application for, for, this, uh, for this adapter and maybe if you can say something about it, maybe a paid app for example? Yeah, sure. I um, mean, uh, we do realize that we did offer in the beginning of a uh, quite basic but at the same time very useful functionality. We wanted the users to be able to indeed simply be able to transfer the images from their camera into their smart device which is extremely capable device on its own and therefore users are able to accomplish many tasks on their Android or uh, iOS uh, enabled devices. Uh, uh, that is not to say that we need to stop there and I agree with you. Um, of course this was the very first step. We should not and will not stop development in that respect. There are some technical implications. As you know, we do have uh, two types of um, uh, adapters, WU1A and B, uh, the difference being in a connector size. Mm. However, both of them are compatible with numerous ca cameras. Therefore, for us, it would be at the moment quite challenging to uh, make a common interface mm. that would be able to control every camera model, starting from Coolpix, uh, yeah. up to more advanced yeah. uh, cameras like for example we have it and using it with D7100. Yeah. That is not to say that we don't realize the need for that and we will keep working to develop more. Okay. Um, alternatively or maybe uh, as, as well as your uh, own development maybe uh, you can think about releasing an API so uh, um, third-party users mm. or companies can develop their own application mm. for, uh, for this uh, it's, a ve it's actually a very interesting concept and uh, obviously does have the benefits as we can see in other devices or in other industries. However, it does have some limitations and also has some risks. Example, when we are launching any Nikon product, we would like to stand 100% behind its quality, behind its functionality. That means that we ourselves are putting in the hardware as well as software. By allowing third parties to modify that, we're taking the risk that the camera, after modification, does not uh, comply with our high standards. 
Now, of course, there's other ways around it, as you suggested, maybe to uh, control what kind of... Uh, however, you should also, I think, would agree that it's a complicated process yes. for which we would need to set up a completely different workflow. Um, I think we're coming close to that was maybe launch like of the cameras like Coolpix C800 um, uh, uh, because uh, it's an Android based camera and as you know Android platform in itself it's already yeah. is open and therefore allows for the applications. Now that is not to say that we're going to develop next DSLR as an Android um, <laughs> platform but technology and innovation does not stop so we're definitely looking into the Okay. new ways to improve the user experience. Okay, uh, Marina, a question for you, I think. Um, why did you change the order of the plus and minus uh, buttons on your new line of cameras? I'm happy you noticed. <laughs> 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 because we, we keep improving the ergonomics and the layout of the buttons and uh, we keep uh, yeah, taking the user feedback on this. Uh, and the buttons were changed uh, last year uh, I think with the D3, D3, 3200, yeah. yeah, and then it changed on all the cameras. Um, so because of the user feedback and uh, our improvement. I like the new layout. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, and in the uh, 7100 we even have a new eye button, so we have uh, yeah. a bit more change in the layout of the buttons. It's very, it's very useful, we tried it. Yes. Um, okay, next question. Um, in terms of uh, HDR, the D7100 has a built-in HDR feature. Um, we got several reports from users who told us that um, the D7100 HDR feature doesn't have auto-align feature. Um, is it something that you're aware of? What can you say about this? Uh, well, the way how Nikon views a, uh, HDR is basically it's meant to be for stationary subjects. Mm. Uh, so in that case, you don't really need auto align function. So if your subject is not perfectly still, then mm -hmm. you can also use active delighting yeah. or other features that we have. Okay, uh, this is I think a question for Zorab. Uh, what caused the delay for uh, the 800 millimeter lens the release? Um, I think it was delayed by a month or something like that. Do you have a delay? Uh, well, there was actually um, the sales start delay. Yeah, I think. It was delayed in Japan. It's already on the ah. market in Europe. Ah, okay. Yes. So it was purely, no delay. Yeah, actually, um, um, there is no, let's say, any technical implications. Okay. It's simply that we're really overwhelmed by the by demand. demand. I think uh, when we were making plans for this lens, it has by far exceeded our most optimistic expectations. The lens has been tested in the uh, last year uh, big sporting Olympics. events. Uh, and it has been tested as well at the Pope inauguration this year. Actually, nickname of the lens is a Pope lens. Therefore, it's the most <laughs> place to be for that lens this year. And the response was so overwhelming that I think, uh, even though it, it is not uh, a really a budget lens, so to say, <laughs> it is selling like one at the moment almost. Okay, going back to the Cortex A, mm -hmm. we were wondering uh, why is the why did you choose the 18 millimeter uh, focal length? Okay. Because uh, many street photographers mm -hmm. prefer the 35 equivalent mm -hmm. uh, focal length, and yeah. this is quite wide. Yeah. Well, um, again, um, I'm not a product manager of Coolpix A, however, I can answer this question, I think, as we are quite well involved in uh, uh, several product developments. Um, well, first of all, the 18, as you know, translates uh, 1 to 1 and the 35 millimeter equivalent to 27. So we would like to think of it more as uh, 28, which is a traditional uh, focal length. And that really is one of the main answers. We have developed this as a um, um, street uh, and more or less reportage sort of uh, camera. Uh, and therefore, we chose to take um, prime. Uh, fixed focal length for that and there are some debates whether or not that should have been 28 or 35 and the decision to go 28 is simply because it is still just as classic as 35 or 50 but 50 would be of course very limiting as a general purpose uh, prime uh, and 28 we feel that just by being wider it gives you more opportunities to shoot and take in the scene as you want um, there is also, of course, opportunity to crop 
which not to say that it will maintain the perspective, etc. There is a huge benefit in maintaining native uh, 35 millimeter focal length, but after some discussions and after some evaluation of the market, it was obvious for us that 28 had just a slight edge over other uh, focal length. Wonderful. Um, and going back to the 7100, um, about uh, the Gorilla Glass or the Gorilla Glass equivalent uh, option. Um, in earlier cameras, you uh, produced uh, the cameras with a, a protection screen, and now this one is without a protection screen. Can we uh, get an explanation for that? Why actually you changed it? I mean, why yeah. did you remove well, the, the protective screen? Well, actually, that's an improvement because our LCD screen uh, has so much improved that would be well, the base of the screen to put a protector on it, you know, <laughs> and to lose all the image quality that you get on the LCD screen. Um, and, well, we cannot actually disclose the technology that we are using, but it's pretty strong, and I think we can... Uh, well, actually, it's a good good question, because this is something that uh, when the camera was developed and we were sent samples, we also have noticed the lack of plastic protection. So one of... Uh, because let's say the, the material used in the screen as a European product management is not the very first point in the specs that we get. So <laughs> before going in depth into every material and every button uh, material that we use, out of curiosity, I just grabbed my keys and literally dragged it across the screen and there was not a single spec. <laughs> and I invited, <laughs> I don't want any, to encourage anybody to do that. Uh, oh. We were able to test this. But if you trust my word, then uh, uh, I think you don't have to expect any uh, major level of damage to your screen. It's very, very sturdy. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.